So imagine there I was, I'm a little boy, I grew up in Kansas, which is the heart of the Midwest in the United States. A uh, very religious community, pretty conservative community, and I used to sneak downstairs late on Friday nights to watch what we called the creature feature. Ours was called the Friday Nightmare, hosted by a woman called Cremacia Mortem, and she would host and introduce us to and then do little bits in between about uh, with all the classic horror cinema. So the Universal Pictures movies, Dracula, Frankenstein, my favorites, Dracula, The Invisible Man, uh, Jekyll and I mean, all of, all of the things that we knew uh, as kids, those iconic images, I was uh, just hypnotized by in, in, in the film. And then over the subsequent years, had been hooked ever since. So then I fell in love with all of the Hammer versions of Dracula, as well as um, the, you know, subsequent adaptations, as well as classic German, you know, variations on the Dracula uh, cinematic story. So uh, as, as horror continued to play such an important role in my life as a storyteller, and as I myself was writing my own uh, films and stories and comic books about monsters and starting to wrestle with bigger ideas about my own mortality and my own struggles with addiction all the way to mental illness all the way to the the, the fears that we all face collectively and as individuals I found that the genre space and horror in particular is such an incredible way to explore and wrestle with those ideas and Dracula the character the figure the representation of all the horror that it is from Stoker to today, it, 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 it continues to strike people in the heart because it represents our fear of the end and the seductiveness of being able to live forever. And ultimately, in this story, we deal with a confrontation where the need, the thirst, the hunger for that that Dracula has, has turned into a bestial kind of predatory horror. And so I read the script. I desperately wanted to be a part of the film. I was fortunate enough to be cast in it. And I stepped foot in Germany, in Babelsberg Studios, on the set of a Dracula picture, a Universal Studios Dracula picture. And I got, um, I got uh, tears in my eyes. I'll never forget. I was by myself and I had gone to a fitting and I'd seen Carlo and the rest of the amazing wardrobe team's versions of what I would look like. And I'd seen glimpses of Andre's shots and lists and images. And then I was on set and I was about to get a tour of our, of our, of our ship. And I, I was very moved and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a surreal thing. Wojciech for me was a character unlike anything I'd ever gotten to play before. And I cared deeply for him as I was first reading the script. And I felt like I knew and understood what the engine was inside of him. Because um, there is a deep longing and sadness in Wojciech for belonging and for purpose. And I believe that he was... Uh, a person who had no real family to speak of and found the family of the crew and the boat at a very young age and has spent the totality of his life at sea. And I loved that Andre was so supportive of this instinct that I had about the character that the ship is so important to Wojciech that it is a, it is, it is a person to him. It is a... It is, it is uh, more than a home to him. It is everything to him. And so I wanted to constantly be tending to her uh, in a way that you would a person or a relationship that you cared very deeply for. I, I, I believed instinctively upon reading the script and building the character that when we would come into port after a long trip at sea and everyone would go to have a good meal or go out to celebrate or get drunk or go to a show, I would stay on board constantly tending to all the little repairs and details and improvements that I could upon this ship. I, I love the idea that a, a character could love something this much and when it becomes threatened, uh, have to 
raise my my uh, stakes, uh, you know, to the point of not just survival for myself, but for this thing that to me represents all that matters in life, as well as my crew. Because the the film begins, and here's my hero. Here is the person who's given me this life, my captain, who I've been sailing under now for a long time. And he's telling me, look, this is my last journey. I am not going to be a captain after we get to London. You, he tells me this, you are going to be the captain. He's giving me the greatest honor I could possibly ever ask for. And I'm so proud. Like my whole life has been leading to this moment. And it's a dream I never thought I would achieve. And within one day, it becomes threatened as people start disappearing and we start to recognize that there is a force on board that's preying upon not only my fellow sailors, but also the ship itself. And uh, man, those are, those are great gifts as an actor. That's something that you can really, for lack of a better phrase, sink your teeth into. Sure, I knew uh, going into this that Wojciech moved and existed in space quite differently than I do as David. I'm an incredibly expressive person. I use my hands, I gesture a lot. I am um, fairly um, uh, verbose, if not ever eloquent. And Wojciech is just a man of so few words. And his presence, because of the years of working on the deck of a ship and the way that he's had to labor, it's hard work living on a boat and being a sailor, um, had, had 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 caused his body to become um, a, a pretty uh, you know incredible machine, and so I I worked out quite a bit. I gained quite a bit of weight. I tried to to bulk up on muscle mass, um, and I then started to work with um, this incredible uh, dialect coach, my who became a dear friend, my my friend Marcel, who's in Poland in Krakow and they and I would meet almost every day to help me go through my lines and make sure I was getting my Polish right. And, um, and then you just find the way that you move in space, the way that he walks, the way that he stands, the way that he thinks, the way that his eyes move when he's thinking. And, um, I can feel it now starting to come back into my body. It's weird. I haven't, I haven't been there for such a long time. Um, but it was intense. It, re it required a lot, but it was, it was great. I loved every every second of that part of the work. Absolutely. So Clemens, here comes Clemens, this guy who is um, uh, an outsider. He's educated, um, and you know it's 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 tricky because Wojciech is is going is in charge of helping to crew up his ship for this journey. The captain has put me in charge of of crewing up this ship, and I want the best sailors, the most experienced, the most rugged. Clemens has soft hands. Um, he's also uh, non-white. And at that time, uh, as it is today, obviously, racism is a, is, is, is a, is a massive, you know, uh, uh, disease in our world. But imagine for a guy like Wojciech, who has an all-white crew and is used to being the boss of people and having a guy who's not white, who's smarter than me, who's more educated than me, and the worst thing about it, my captain, my hero, the guy whose opinion that matters the most to me really likes this guy. And they can have these really sophisticated conversations that I don't get to participate in. So what was really cool about that as an actor and as a character is it motivated this this distrust of Clements, this this dislike of Clements. I wanted Clements to fail. I wanted to be, you know, making sure that he knew that I was in charge. And Corey Hawkins, who brings Clements to life, does such a phenomenal job with him that over the course of the story, not only do I start to realize that I am completely wrong about this guy, that he does have answers and he is the person that I can look to, I become dependent upon him and what a cool journey that is to take as an actor and get to bring that to life and um, hopefully demonstrate you know to anyone watching the story unfold um, what a foolish thing it is to make judgments about people based upon things like that and not giving them a chance because perhaps maybe if Wojciech had listened to Clements earlier uh, things might not have gone the way that they do. <laughs> well I've been so very fortunate very blessed I've gotten to work with some of the great directors of our time 
and Andre's work grabbed me uh, by the little monster kid heart a long time ago, the first time I saw Troll Hunter. I remember saying, this guy, whoever made this movie, is really, really good. Then you see a film like The Autopsy of Jane Doe and you're like, I've never seen a movie like that before. I knew that whoever made that film was somebody very special. He also adapted one of my favorite books as a kid for a big studio picture, which was uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which I loved. I went and saw it as a matinee while I was filming The Suicide Squad, I'll never forget. And I, I sat in the theater, I was like, gosh, I really love this guy. So the, the fact that I get to be in Andre's vision of a Dracula film and knowing Andre's monster kid heart that has you know been pounding in his chest since he was a little boy in Norway um, made me very confident that I was in great company. He's such a kind and uh, and 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 you know soulful person who has a deep, deep appreciation and wants to dialogue um, intimately about the journey of an actor. He's not someone who's going to just tell you what to do, where to stand, and how to say it. He really wants to help you get in there and understand what it is that you're trying to do, and he's willing to have you know lengthy conversations about it and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see him. I haven't gotten to see him in a long time and I know he's halfway around the world. So I hope I get to sit in the sacred uh, space that is the cinema with him in the dark at some point and see uh, this movie together. This was, this was hands down the most difficult, physically demanding film shoot of my career. I was bruised, banged around, bumped every day in some way or another. Um, extreme heat when we were in Malta working on the deck of the ship for the daytime shots. Exteriors, it was still hot as hell while we were down there. And then when we were in Berlin, remember I'm a tall guy and we're working in spaces that are small. There's lots of bumping your head and you're fighting and you're wrestling and you're crawling around on the wooden floors. And our amazing production team created spaces that felt very authentically like being in the hold of a ship. Um, but that is a, a rugged terrain to be fighting the Prince of Darkness within. So I um, I would say I was doing uh, boxing training uh, several times a week uh, with my wife, with the trainer in, in, in Germany. I was um, working out and trying to do as much yoga as possible, keeping myself stretched and fit. And um, I love that part of the process. I love bringing the physicality into the work because I think it informs the voice and the characterization so much. But it was hard. I'm not going to lie. Like there were, there were days where I dragged myself home and just sat with ice packs and thought, am I getting too old for this? <laughs> no, we haven't. I mean, this is, I get to be part of a tradition that is um, almost a hundred years old when you look at the universal Dracula tradition. I mean, Todd Browning and Bella Lugosi and what they created um, back in 1932 or whatever um, to now and all the iterations of Dracula that we've been able to see and the way that a lot of us imagine Dracula with um, a flowing cape and a red pendant and uh, being a, you know, alluring, um, sensual symbol of, of, of seduction is completely now um, reverting back to the core bestial basic um, most monstrous elements that Stoker writes about in the book. And Dracula in, in our film is the scariest Dracula probably that's ever been put on screen. I think that we've been missing that. And I think it's time we make Dracula scary again. So I'm grateful to be a part of a film that does make Dracula so scary again. And what makes him so skin crawlingly terrifying is that not only is he a great hunter and he's able to prey upon the crew one by one and hunt like a master hunter and rip throats out and drink blood and do whatever he needs to do to satiate his hunger, but he seems to get this sick, twisted kind of pleasure, this arousal out of toying with his food, out of almost feeding upon the psychic fear that he's creating on this boat. That's Ugh, that's so intense and visceral and I can't wait for audiences to sit in dark movie theaters and scream their little hearts out. <laughs> Things that scare me the most in real life, uh, finality, um, mortality, what lies beyond. I think about um, 
you know, being, losing the people that I love. Um, I'm terrified of people that were, are willing to throw their full force, be it socially, economically, or physically against things, especially people or the environment without the benefit of information. It scares me so much that in human nature, people can be so uh, rapid to the attack without ever informing themselves as to what they're attacking about. Um, human nature is uh, one of the most horrifying things that's ever existed in the universe. Uh, and it's also a beautiful thing. So that terrifies me. I'm, I'm scared of the fact that I, I love I love this life and I love humanity, but I also am terrified of it and people scare the crap out of me. Um, and uh, I think that um, the thing that's the most frustratingly scary about this universe is that some dark force in it seems hell bent and convinced that it's just pushing people to this false belief that they're alone. And that is this kind of bizarre sick trick that everybody at some point or another if not constantly falls prey to and I love that I get to be a storyteller because I think when we do it really well we have little glimpsy moments little bursts of light where people sitting in the audience feel recognized they feel seen and they feel a little less alone for a minute so even in something as I guess on the surface simple and fun as a Dracula picture a scary movie a genre horror film uh, can achieve that, and that's what I'm. I'm that's the that's the light that I'm constantly reaching for, I guess, as an actor.